Welcome to Typewriter Minutes. This is Sam. Today we're doing a review of a 1939 Underwood Master, the biggest typewriter in the world. Now this is a big desktop, and you might be thinking, it is big, but is it really the biggest one ever made? Yes, it is, and we'll show you why. An estimated 44 million people attended the 1939-40 New York World's Fair. An unusual item was on display at the Underwood Elliott Fisher exhibit, a typewriter. But not just any typewriter, it was the giant Underwood Master typewriter. The huge machine, weighing 14 tons, was 1,728 times larger than the regular Underwood Master. It required three years to build. Each type bar weighed 45 pounds and the carriage weighed 3,500 pounds. Letters were typed on special stationary measuring 9 by 12 feet, and the ribbon was 100 feet long and 5 inches wide. Two boxcars were required to transport the giant typewriter to the World's Fair. Before we show you the mechanics of this machine, we're going to show you a couple special features. So those of you that are Underwood experts, you might recognize something unusual about this Underwood Master. Anybody? Anybody? The stripes on the side are not original. Those actually come off a later model Underwood. Uh, when I bought this, the seller told me that it was missing the side stripes, but he put on uh, actually, I think they're a little bit cooler. These kind of look like racing stripes on the side. And if you flip to the back, you can see this was the size of the original uh, chrome stripes. And we'll show you here in just a sec what, uh, what an original looks like. But this is kind of cool, I think. It gives it a really racing look. And we've nicknamed this typer the Master Mod. Here's a picture of an Underwood Master with the original stripes, and you can see they're just not quite as cool looking. And here again we have our racing stripes. Uh, I think it gives it a cool look, a modified look. That's why we call it the Master Mod. Now Sam is going to show you one other special feature about the Master that we kind of like. So you see this? There's a surprise behind it. Watch this. peek -a we call it the peekaboo peek door. So behind our little peekaboo door we have Lily. She's a uh, part of the Typewriter Minutes team but she's not quite help, not quite old enough yet to help with the videos so uh, you might be hearing from her soon. And behind the little peekaboo door you can see the type bars. So kind of cool. Okay, the margin settings on this are backwards, and I always have to stop and think what I'm doing when I set the margins because the right-hand margin is set on the left side, and the left-hand margin is set on the right side. So it's counterintuitive to me and really takes some getting used to. Uh, and as you type, you can see this approaches like the number 80 as you're getting closer to the right-hand side of the carriage. So it's just counterintuitive, but it, you get used to it after you've typed on it for a little while. You have this nice little thumb hook here for moving the carriage. The carriage release lever is this one right here. Zoom in there, Mr. Cameraman. So you can put your thumb on it, push that down. The carriage weighs about a ton and it glides really smoothly back and forth. There's a nice fill. Uh, here's the paper release up here. Paper bale has a little button here or a little lever or if you don't want to have the paper bill down, uh, you can flip this lever back and forth, which is nice. You have this doodad, which I think is for cards, a little card stock. Uh, the Underwood connoisseurs can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's kind of a small return lever but still functions nicely. Over here we have, uh, pull that out and it releases the clicks. So if you wanna type on a form, just like most machines, this lever here does the same thing. I think this one I think loses or remembers where your clicks were. 
this one loses it. At least I think that's what it was. Over here you have the line space lever for single, double, and might be space and a half. And then your uh, paper guide. Went over to the side of the machine. Again, you have your modified racing stripes. This here is the ribbon uh, rewinder. So just turn that and come up here, you'll see it winding the ribbon. Okay, on to the back side. You can see the original chrome striping and how it doesn't match, but you can't really see it when you're looking at it from the front, or you don't notice that when you're looking at it from the front. It's just a giant, hulking, heavy machine. But as you'll see during the type test, it might be the best typer we have. It's just lightning quick, has a super light touch. Um, I guess that's, I don't know if that's just from the really long type bars where you get you know, leverage from just barely touching keys, but it's just absolutely lightning quick. And now for a quick type test. At first, in the black setting, the quick red box jumps over the lazy brown box. The thing is just so lightning quick, it's hard to describe until you actually type on one. It's just a real pleasure to type on. Real pleasure, folks. Then, on the red setting, now is the time for all good Now for a quick alignment test. Are you ready? Capital H knowledge. 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 There's another carriage release over here, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Capital H knowledge. Capital H knowledge. Help. Try saying capital H while it's typing that fast. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Okay, that looks pretty good. We haven't really adjusted this machine since we first got it. Not bad for a machine that's 80 years old. Um, when we first bought this, uh, we got it. We wanted to have kind of a decorative piece to sit right there, and I wanted to make sure we got a function functioning typewriter as well. So we're really glad that we got the master because it not only looks good. It types great, and I do take it out for types now and then to keep the, the dust off and to keep it going. Okay, we'll finish up with some of the likes and dislikes of our 1939 Underwood Master. Here's some things we like about it. It types like the wind. Super fast, probably one of our favorite typers. It has a cool modified racing stripes, the peekaboo door, of course, and all-around good looks. It also has the 1939 World Fair history, which is just amazing. Dislikes, uh, the platen and the other rubber could probably uh, be replaced. We're not going to do it because I don't use this machine often enough, but platen's pretty hard. Some of the other rubber underneath is starting to crumble a little bit. And it's also super, super heavy and hard to transport. Not a problem if it's going to sit in a place of honor by your front door, but if you like to move it around, that could be a problem. And then the, other, the only other dislike we could think of is the margin adjustments, which just feel backwards. This one adjusting the left margin, this one adjusting the right. And that's about it. That's all for now on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Peekaboo!